You're listening to the Dibbly Dobbly Podcast. Remember to like, share, comment, subscribe, and click the bell to make sure you get the latest episodes of the podcast. Be sure to like and share our Facebook page and follow us on Twitter and on Instagram. Hi, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of the Dibbly Dobbly Podcast. And on today's episode of the podcast, we are reviewing the third test match between Australia and Pakistan from the SCG. And Australia have begun 2024 in grand style with a very comprehensive victory over Pakistan in the last test of this series to win the series 3-0 and to start 2024 on a on a very big note. Um, also, David Warner, uh, retirement, last ever test match for him. He was sent off in style and he showed uh, why we, uh, you know, come to a custom with David Warner. In the second innings, he batted really well for a half century. His final test innings, uh, he went uh, swinging and uh, he produced a very good good show of batting in that run chase in the second innings um, to see Australia home uh, to win this test match and the series. Um, for Pakistan, yet again, Pakistan will rue the missed opportunities, drop catches, poor batting, uh, cost them dearly in this third test match as it did in Melbourne. Um, you know, they had an opportunity again to win this test match, but unfortunately drop catches, um, missed opportunities with the bat, they weren't able to capitalise and deliver on that. So Pakistan um, will will definitely be disappointed about those missed opportunities and weren't able to capitalise on them. And uh, their losing streak in test matches in Australia continues for another few years, and uh, they'll be disappointed um, about this result from the third test here in Sydney. So there's plenty to talk about from this third test match of the series. We'll talk about everything. We'll dissect everything, talk about where both teams went right and went wrong in this match in terms of winning and losing this test match. So there's plenty to talk about and discuss. But first of all, before we do that, let's talk about the match summary. Let's have a look at the match summary and uh, see how the game was set up. Uh, Pakistan, for the first time in the series, batted first and uh, made 313 all out. Mohamed Rizwan top scored with 88 and Pat Cummins took five wickets for Australia. Australia, in reply, were bowled out for 299. Manas Labashain top scored with 60. Amir Jamal took six wickets for Pakistan. Pakistan in their second innings had an opportunity with a slender lead um, going into the second innings. They were bowled out for 115. Saham Aroub, the debutante, top scored with 33, and Josh Hazelwood took four wickets for Australia. Australia needed 130 runs to win in the second innings. They chased them down easily, finishing on two for 130. David Warner in his final test innings, top scored with 57. And Sajid Khan took two wickets for Pakistan. Australia won by eight wickets. And Amir Jamal was the player of the match for his 82 in the first innings and six wickets. Um, he was named the player of the match. That's the match summary uh, from this third test between Australia and Pakistan. What were the key moments and key factors from the third test between Australia and Pakistan? Well, Amir Jamal's innings of 82 and his 10th wicket partnership of 86 with Mia Hamza rescued Pakistan from 9 for 227 to 313 in the first innings to post a, a decent first inning score on a pitch that was wearing and deteriorating, a bit of up and down bounce and spin. Uh, that enabled Pakistan to get over 300 from when they were 9 for 227. Uh, Amir Jamal taking 6 for 69 in the bowling performance and effort from Pakistan, contributing to Pakistan bowling Australia out for 299, which gained Pakistan a crucial 14-run lead in the first innings. Uh, but that was short-lived. Josh Hazelwood took three wickets in one over, and that was the key over for Australia to really turn the match on its head. That left Pakistan reeling at 7 for 67 on day late on day three, and then to be bowled out for 115 and uh, Pakistan were able to set Australia 130 to win, which wasn't enough, and Australia chased the runs down easily, and those were the key moments 
and key factors from the third test between Australia and Pakistan from the M. Uh, sorry, from the SCG, I should say. Um, let's talk about both teams, Australia and Pakistan, how they performed in this third test match at the SCG. Um, first of all, let's start with the home side, Australia. Let's talk about Australia's performance with bat and ball. Let's talk about Australia's batters and how they went about their performance in this third test at the SCG. So Warner, 34 and 57. Kawaja, 47 and 0. Labashane, 60 and 62, not out. Smith, 38 and 4, not out. Head, 10. Mitchell Marsh, 54. And Carey, 38. That's how the Australian batters went about their business in this third test. Um, let's talk about their performance across the two innings. We'll start with the first innings. Bowled out for 299. 14 runs behind Pakistan on the first innings. They did really well, Australia, to get to within 14 runs of Pakistan's first inning score. Um, some very handy partnerships in the first innings. 70 between Warner and Kwanja for the first wicket. 79 for the third wicket between Labashane and Smith. 84 between Marsh and Carey for the sixth wicket was uh, crucial in terms of Australia getting towards Pakistan's first innings total on a pitch that was... Uh, deteriorating quite quickly. It was quite dry. It was taking turn and spin. Uh, it was up and down at times as well. Um, and then Australia had a batting collapse. They lost five for 10 in 20 balls and they should have got a first innings lead, but that batting collapse set them back and they were trailing by 14 runs uh, on first innings. The second innings, the run chase, they needed 130 to win. They chased down the runs easily on a wearing surface. Uh, David Warner played well in his final test innings, 57 he made. Uh, brilliant partnership with Manus Labuschagne, which was uh, a pretty handy partnership of 119 for the second wicket. Um, enabled Australia to get over the line and uh, chase down the runs and win by eight wickets. Um, and um, they played with positive intent. They looked to score on the wearing pitch. And you needed to do that on a pitch that's keeping a bit up and down bit of turn for the spinners. You need to be positive. And that's what David Warner and Marnus Labuschagne showed in the second innings when Australia chased down the run. So that's pretty much a snapshot of how Australia went about things across the two innings with the bat. They weren't at their fluent best, Australia, uh, with the bat. And after Perth, I think, in the series, in Melbourne and in Sydney, they weren't quite at their fluent best. It, it was very difficult, very hard work to score runs across the final two test matches of this series. Uh, because Pakistan bowled really well and kept them um, on the ropes. Um, there was a lot of starts, especially in the first innings, a lot of starts uh, from the Australian batters. No one really kicked on and scored a big 100. Uh, Labuschagne top scored with 60, and then Mitchell Marsh chipped in with another half century, 54. Um, so no one went on. No one converted the starts. Uh, Australia should have got a first innings lead. They, they were bowled out for 299. As I said, they trailed by 14 runs. They should have got a first innings lead. That partnership between Carey and Marsh, as I mentioned, six-wicket partnership, 84, that partnership looked like getting the first innings lead for Australia, looking like getting the lead of 50 or 100 runs or something like that. That would have been very handy for Australia. But unfortunately, another batting collapse from Australia. They lost five for 10 after T on day three, where we saw carnage, 11 wickets fell after T on day three, if you include Pakistan's batting as well. 11 wickets fell. Um, that cost them getting a first innings lead. But in the second innings, where you needed to chase a, a sort of lowish total uh, target, 130 runs wasn't enough for Pakistan. They knew that themselves. Uh, but Australia were able to chase them down easily. Uh, played with positive intent, David Warner. His last test innings, he wanted to go out with a bang, and he certainly did that. 57 of 75, he played really well played some good shots, showing why David Warner was so good in test cricket. You know, that ability to come from a T20 background to play the way he did in his test career, whether you like him or hate him, you got to say David Warner was a, was a pretty good opener in terms of his stats, really. The numbers don't lie. Um, and he wanted to go out on a bang and finish off on a good note, and he certainly did that. I was really impressed with Marnus Labuschagne's intent in the second innings, 62 not out of 73 to back up the 60 from the first innings. Um, I thought Marnus played a little bit better. He looked a little bit more fluent um, in the first two test matches of this series. He looked a little bit 
out of sorts. But good to see Marnus getting back to some rhythm and some form. Um, and that's certainly good signs for Australia going forward into the West Indies series to end the summer, but also the Test series in New Zealand, which is to follow after the Australian summer in February. So good to see Marnus doing well. Um, Kawaja played well in the first innings, you know, got out for a duck in the second innings. Um, but he played well for his 47 in the first innings. Steve Smith, he struggled again, uh, grinded it out to 38, then got out. Travis Head, not quite at his fluent best in this series, got out for 10. Mitchell Marsh continuing on his great form, 54 he made. Alex Carey, good to see Carey continuing uh, his run scoring resurgence, uh, backing up his good performance in Melbourne, backed it up here in Sydney, uh, got a good delivery, uh, which uh, clean bowled him. Uh, from Sajid Khan, which just clipped the leg bail. Uh, but he was looking good. He was on track to make a, a good score until he got out. Um, so Australia's batting, they did well to 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 get within touching distance of Pakistan on first innings. The run chase was pretty clinical. They put pressure on Pakistan's bowlers from the, words, from the word go, I should say. Pretty much broke the back of the run chase, and they were able to chase down the turtle with ease of 130. Um so you know, Australia's batting overall in this in this test match. I think they'll they'll be pleased with their efforts. Um, not quite at their fluent best, but I think on a wearing surface that was up and down, taking a bit of spin. Um, I think they'll be very pleased with the way that they fought, found a way to um, to get through that, and and they'll be very pleased with the effort overall. So that's the batting. Let's talk about the bowling and how the Australian bowlers went about their business in this third test against Pakistan at the SCG. Uh, a wicket for Travis Head, uh, three wickets for Stark, a wicket for Marsh, uh, six wickets for Cummins, four wickets for Lyon, and five wickets for Hazelwood. And that's how the Australian bowlers uh, went about their business across uh, the uh, test match with the ball. And um, Australia, let's talk about their bowling performance across the two innings. We'll start with the first innings. They did well to bowl Pakistan out for 313. Australia had Pakistan in trouble at 447, then at nine for 227. And that 10th wicket partnership uh, between Jamal and Hamza, 86, got Pakistan uh, over 300 to 313. Jamal played well for his 82. And Australia sort of struggled with that uh, last wicket partnership. Um, they offered good resistance and fight, and they were able to put Pakistan over that 300 mark. And uh, Australia missed a bit of a trick there uh, to try and finish off the innings much earlier. But you've got to give credit to uh, Jamal and also Hamza. They, they grinded it out. They, they found a way. Uh, so that's how Australia went about things with the ball in the first innings. The second innings, they were trailing by 14 runs. They needed to bowl well, Australia. If they were chasing anything over 200, it would have been difficult, especially batting last on a wearing surface at the SCG. But they bowled very well. Um, as you would expect from this Australian bowling attack, uh, they bowled Pakistan out for 115. Josh Hazelwood's over, where he took three wickets, the wickets of Sajik, uh, the wickets of Shaquille, who uh, nicked a wide delivery outside of stump. Sajik Khan got clean bowled, and then Salman got out, nicked, nicked off, caught behind by David Warner at slip. Those three wickets and that one over pretty much changed the course of the innings and, and the match and swung the match back in Australia's favour. And that pretty much sealed the fate of Pakistan in this test match. And Australia really put the screws and the pressure on Pakistan in that second innings uh, with the ball. So that's how they went about things across the two innings. Uh, I thought the bowling was was good. Um, as I said, they missed a bit of a trick in the first innings, Australia. They had Pakistan 9 for 227. And I think they got carried away with the short ball, especially to Jamal in that 10th wicket partnership with Hamza. Uh, the pitch wasn't really that fast. It was slow. The bounce was around about chest height, hip height. So it wasn't like bouncing over your head. Um, they got carried away with the short ball a little bit there to Jamal. Uh, he looked comfortable playing the pull and hook shot. Um, he, he hit a few boundaries off it as well, hit a few fours and sixes. Um, so Australia got carried away there. Um, so if they bowled as they would bowl to a top order batter to Jamal, they would have got him out. Uh, but the tactics were a little bit wrong there to Jamal, and they sort of got carried away with that short ball barrage, um, which uh, didn't trouble Jamal at all. 
Um, so they missed a bit of a trick there, Australia. They could have bowled Pakistan out for 227. That would have been a good result. In the end, they got to 313 because of that partnership and innings from Jamal and Hamza. Um, but the second innings bowling performance was very good. Look, Pakistan under pressure, the match situation. Um, Australia just know how to hunt in in a pack, um, led by Josh Hazelwood. He's bowled without luck in this series. And for him to take four wickets and three wickets in that one over was pretty good. Nathan Lyon was good on a pitch that was offering turn and assistance for him. He picked up three wickets, which was nice. And a wicket each for, for Travis Head, the part-time off-spinner, got the big wicket of Bab Razar, uh, which was a big wicket for Australia. Um, and then Mitchell, Mitchell Stark and Pat Cummins chipped in with a wicket here and there. Um, so Australia's bowling yet again, uh, really testing the Pakistan batters. And uh, Pakistan weren't able to overcome that pressure as it has been the case in the series. They haven't been able to put pressure back on the Australian bowlers. Um, so Australia's bowling overall in this test match. The second innings was very good. The first innings was good as well, but they missed a bit of a trick. They should have wrapped it up a little, lot earlier. But the second innings bowling performance was very good. Uh, top class, uh, pressure of the match. They just know how to take wickets, this bowling attack. And Pakistan just crumbled under the pressure. Um, so that's Australia's bowling and that's Australia's performance across the test match. And let's talk about Pakistan's performance with bat and ball in this test match. We'll start with the batters, talk about how they went in this third test. Shafiq got out for a duck in both innings, got out for a pair in both innings. Uh, Arub, the debutante, uh, 0 and 33. Masood, 35 and 0. Azam, 26 and 23. Shaquille, 5 and 2. Rizwan, 88 and 28. Salman, 53 and 0. Sajid Khan, 15 and 0. Jamal, 82 and 18. And that's how the Pakistan batters went about their business in this third test with the bat. Um, in terms of their performance across the two innings, the first innings, they found themselves in trouble at 4 for 47 and then at 9 for 227. But uh, thanks to Muhammad Rizwan's innings of 88, plus Salman's innings of 53, plus the very handy contribution from Amir Jamal, 82, and the very handy 10th wicket partnership that Jamal had with Hamza of 86, got Pakistan over 300 to 313, which um, put them in the game. It got them in the game. It was something to bowl at. It wasn't enough runs. Usually at the SCG, it's a lot higher scores in the first innings on average, uh, well over 400 plus. But they got to a score, which gave them a chance in the test match. And, and that was the main thing for Pakistan to focus on. Let's get a score over 300. At least it keeps us in the test match. Um, that's what they did. And they did that quite well to, to rescue themselves when they were in trouble. The second innings was a golden opportunity. They had a lead of 14 runs. They bowled Australia out for under 300, 229. Had a lead of 14 runs. They needed something over 200 to challenge Australia as a target on a wearing pitch. Uh, but poor shot selection, pressure of the game situation, and Australia's relentless pressure and very good bowling, Pakistan were in all sorts of trouble. They lost seven for 67. Um, they lost three wickets and one over to Josh Hazelwood. Pretty much swung the match in Australia's favour. Pakistan weren't sending Australia a big turtle to chase in the last innings. They were bowled out for 115. They set Australia 130 to win, which wasn't enough. Um, lost their way with the bat. Pakistan in that second innings and just came down to poor shot selection and poor decision making uh, and the pressure of the match situation. So that's how Pakistan went about things with the bat. Um, you got to say very poor batting in both innings, actually. Poor shot selection in both innings, inconsistent batting and batting collapses. Um, if it wasn't for Rizwan, Salman, Jamal's innings of 82 plus the 10th wicket partnership he had with Hamza, then Pakistan would have been all out for 227, which Australia didn't really capitalise on that moment. And uh, without those innings, Pakistan would have been in a different situation in this test match. But they did well to fight back with the bat, and I thought that was great to see. Great to see that fight, as we've seen from Pakistan in the series, that fight, that resilience, uh, that character especially Amir Jamal, very impressed with his character with the bat, but also with the ball, which we'll talk about in a minute. Uh, Rizwan, why didn't he play in the first test? Uh, um, 
you know, should have played all three tests in this series, Rizwan. Really does provide something of difference for Pakistan with the bat. Very good keeper as well. Uh, Salman, very handy with his contribution. But there were a lot of starts for Pakistan, especially in the first innings. No one really got on to score a big score. Rizwan and Jamal got 80-odd, could have scored 100. Salman, half century, could have scored 100. A uh, lot of starts. No one really got in and got set and went on to score a big score. The second innings crumbled under the pressure of Pakistan. They, they needed to bat with a sense of purpose and responsibility. Poor shot selection. You know, when they lost three wickets in one over to Josh Hayeswood, Shout Shaquille shot, driving at a wide ball outside of stump. That's a poor shot. Sajid Khan getting out clean bold. You've got to say that's a good ball from Hazelwood. Nothing Sajid Khan could have done. And then Salman edging one outside off stump straight into the hands of David Warner at first slip. You can't be doing that. You can't be giving Australia an opportunity like that. And Australia never really let go of that opportunity. Once they took those wickets, they kept the foot down. And it was just an opportunity gone begging for Pakistan. Very frustrating. They had a lead of 14 runs. For the first time in the series, they were in front in the game, in a test match in, in this series. They had an opportunity in their hands and they couldn't grasp it. And that's been the case with Pakistan with bats and ball and in the field. Uh, they haven't been able to grasp those opportunities. And, you know, that second innings was an opportunity and they, and they let it slip. And they weren't really going to recover from that batting collapse. They lost, I don't know how many wickets they lost in that batting collapse, but they lost a few. Um, for not many runs, uh, and it, it, it was frustrating and disappointing. I think Pakistan, when they look back on this test match, they look back in this series, the missed opportunities, the missed chances with bat and ball and in the field has cost them dearly. And uh, that second innings was at least set astray some sort of a type, maybe 150, maybe 200. It would have been difficult, but in the end, 130 wasn't enough. And they just crumbled under the pressure and they, and they weren't able to, to capitalise on that golden opportunity with the bat. So I think Pakistan, you know, looking back on this performance with the bat in this third test, poor shot selection, poor decision-making, lack of batters getting in and getting big big scores. A lot of them got starts. The second innings batting just didn't quite handle the pressure well enough. Um, and that really cost them in the end. So that's... The disappointing thing with Pakistan, they had an opportunity. They weren't able to grasp it. So that's the batting for Pakistan. Let's talk about the bowling performance from the third test and see how that bowlers went about their business. Um, two wickets for Salman, three wickets for Sajid Khan, uh, six wickets for Jamal, uh, no wickets for Hassan Ali, and a wicket for Nia Hamza. And that's how the uh, Pakistan bowlers went about their business in this uh third test match of the series. Uh, let's talk about the first innings bowling performance. Did well to bowl Australia out for 2-2-9. They got a lead of 14 runs, which was handy on the first innings. Caused a bit of, bit of problems for Australia with the ball. Uh, really made scoring difficult for Australia at times with the bowling performance in the first innings. Uh, batting collapse for Australia, lost 5 for 10. Amir Jamal led the way, taking six wickets for, uh, for Pakistan. Um, in the second innings, defending 130, the batters failed to capitalise on the golden opportunity of the 14-run lead. They weren't able to capitalise on that, got bowled out for 115. 130, they set Australia to win. That wasn't going to be enough. The bowlers had no chance of defending that. Uh, Sajid Khan took the two wickets, you know, got rid of Warner uh, for the second wicket, got rid of Kawaja for the first wicket of the innings, but... Uh, Pakistan were put under pressure, really. Warner and Labashane put them under pressure with that partnership of over 100 runs. It was 119, that second wicket partnership. That really put them under pressure, and they, they weren't able to defend 130. So that's Pakistan's bowling performance across the two innings. Uh, Pakistan, they bowled well at times in this test match. They really put Australia under pressure. They made Australia work hard for their runs. Uh, but yet again, the drop catches from Pakistan. There were a few drop catches in this match. Um, Siam Aroub, the debutant, dropped Mitchell Marsh. Um, and I think he dropped David Warner at slip as well in the first innings. Um, 
So yet again, drop catches from Pakistan, missed opportunities. Um, and that pretty much cost him again in the in the bowling, really. I, I thought Jamal bowled well. I think he was by far, you know, him and Salman were Pakistan's two best bowlers, really. Uh, Jamal, six wickets, second six-wicket haul in the series, following the one he got in Perth in the first test. Really like the way he goes about his cricket. He's a fighter. He's a character. He's a person and a player that wants to be in the contest. Uh, we, we saw that with the bat when he got 82. Um, you know, he, he's a good competitor. And he bowled his heart out for Pakistan. Unfortunately, those efforts with the bat and with the ball went in vain because Pakistan weren't able to grasp the moment and seize the opportunity. Um, and another thing, you know, in the run chase, Pakistan, yes, they were defending 130. But what everyone was saying and were pretty much complex and puzzled was that Shah Massoud didn't bowl Jamal and Salman earlier. They didn't open with Salman and Jamal up front. They went with Sajid Khan, who bowled the first over. Then they went to Mia Hamza and then Hassan Ali. And then Jamal was the last option, the last throw of the dice. Um, it was really puzzling because Salman and Jamal were the two best bowlers for Pakistan, and they didn't go with them early. Um, you know, in a run chase like that, when you are defending a low target, go to your two best bowlers that are going to take your wickets, and that's Jamal and that's Salman. Salman bowled much better than Sajid Khan by miles. You know, that was clear to see um, in this test match. Um, and Jamal bowled well, took six wickets in the first inning. So a, a bit of inexperience there from Shah Massoud, obviously being a new captain. Um, looking back on that, he probably would have said, yeah, you know what, I should have gone to to Salman and Jamal to open the bowling. You never know. We could take a few early wickets, may cause a bit of trouble for Australia, but, you know, always defending 130, it was always going to be a difficult task, and that's what happened. So, you know, these things you look at in hindsight, uh, but for the Pakistan bowlers, they've really fought hard in this test, you know, as they, as they did in Melbourne, and as they did to an extent in Perth as well. Uh, but yet again, the missed opportunities, drop catches, um cost them again um and really that's what pakistan will will reflect on in this third test the drop catches the missed opportunities it could have been a lot different unfortunately it wasn't to be so that's pakistan's bowling performance and pakistan's team performance as a whole in this test match i think they'll be very very disappointed that they weren't able to grasp the key opportunities in this test match as it was the case in Melbourne. You know, if they took their chances, took the opportunities with the bat in this test match, but also in Melbourne, it could have been a lot different. And uh, they'll be very disappointed that they weren't able to do that. Um, gave Australia a chance, gave them a sniff, and, and Australia were able to capitalise. And, and Pakistan, unfortunately, weren't able to... Uh, to seize the moment and to grab those opportunities, which is the disappointing factor for Pakistan because they did so well in the last two test matches to try and be competitive, give it a good fight. It's just those little areas, the little one percenters where they went array, um, weren't able to capitalise those key opportunities. So that's Pakistan's performance in this uh, third test match of this series. And my, my thoughts from the test match, my final thoughts from this um, third test match between Australia and Pakistan, well, I thought it was another good test match. Um, I thought we had another good competitive test match. It was a good contest between bat and ball. Both sides had to work hard for their runs on a pitch at the SCG that was taking turn, keeping a bit up and down. And uh, it was good to see that, good to see that good contest between the bat and the ball. Um, in the end, Australia too strong, too good. Uh, David Warner played well in his final test match in the run chase, um, guiding Australia home. Um, Australia just too strong. They were able to win the key moments. They were able to seize the opportunities that were presented. Uh, Pakistan will rue the missed opportunities again, drop catches, poor batting. They had an opportunity to set up the game. They weren't able to do it. And uh, that's something that Pakistan will be regretting uh, from this third test match. Um, those opportunities, if they take those opportunities with the bat, with the ball, 
in the field with the catches could have been a bit different in this third test as it was in the second test in Melbourne. But for them, it's a learning experience, a young group, a young team. Uh, this will put them in good stead. As Shah Massoud said at the uh, presentation after the test, he said, we're learning the hard way. And Pakistan are certainly learning the hard way, but it will definitely make them a better team going forward. Um, but also, as we always talk about with the Sydney test, the pink test, of course, the McGrath Foundation, uh, the real winners from the third test, even though Australia won, but when we always come to the SCG for the for the pink test, New Year's test, it's always the McGrath Foundation. They are the true winners um, of, of this test match. Uh, great work that Glenn McGrath does. It was wonderful to see uh, many people get behind Glenn and the foundation and what, what he does uh, for such a good cause is, is wonderful to see that support. So good to see that support again for the McGrath Foundation, as it is always for the SCG test every year um, in the Australian summer. Um, so that was the true winner from this third test match. But for Australia... Uh, to win the series 3-0, to send David Warner off on a good note. I think Australia will be very pleased with the way they, they played in this test match. Pakistan will be disappointed, but there's some good signs in there, some some good signs. Amir Jamal played well, you know, batted really well, bowled well. Um, he's a player for the future for Pakistan. And there's a lot of good signs for Pakistan. And I think they'll be very pleased that they were competitive in this third test match. Unfortunately, they weren't able to seize and grasp the key opportunities, which pretty much cost them um, a, a opportunity at least to try and uh, win this last test match of the series. Well, thank you, everyone, for listening to our third test review between Australia and Pakistan. If you're watching or listening to this episode of the podcast on our YouTube channel, uh, let us know your thoughts on this third test match between Australia and Pakistan in the comments. We would love to hear what you have to say. Thanks for watching and listening. Until next time, keep safe and bye for now.